us, okay? Um, remember, with the previous lecture, the most important things were the three models, okay? I was very interested in you knowing the production possibility frontier. Production possibility frontier. Yes. Okay, so we have a graph representing two variables. Uh, X and Y. The horizontal line is called the the Y. And the vertical is the Y. Yeah. Okay. Now, what's the main idea of the product expression possibility function? What's the main idea of the model? What is the main idea? Is the relationship between them this two? It will. I think the main idea is to help production possibility for fair model to help economy. So, Richard Cohn? Yeah, uh, PDF. So, it illustrates the trade off. Uh, let's say, uh, if you, um, let's say, I'm, I make TikTok videos and I make hats. Like, if I, for example, it gives the idea that if the more TikTok videos I make, is the less hat I can do because I'm giving up that hour of making hats. So we that's the idea. Now, the model is there are two production possibilities. Let's say small jets and three lines. Small and big jets. So how much of one are you going to give up to make the other one? You can make all, all small jets and no dream liners, or all dream liners and no small jets, or a combination of the two, right? So that's the idea. What is the production possibility from here? It's going to be the maximum you can make. The combination of the two things, physical things, you can say that, huh? yeah. the positive and the negative. Um, yeah, but the idea is that if you the whole model, there's two things you can produce. You can produce small planes or big planes. Because I make all small airplanes, I make all big airplanes, because I make a combination of the two. That's all. That's all the model is really about. So it's a simple model, okay? Most most countries or even companies have more than fifty products, okay? That shows as well uh, how uh, how efficient efficient is using the uh, sources. Yeah. Okay. Like yeah. You have the budget. So if you're on the line, you're efficient, right? But you're the line you yeah. So you know, are you using your 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 inputs to the maximum to get the maximum output? That's the idea. Your, your your human capacity, your machines, your material, your, your, your factory space, are you using it all to get the maximum output or not? That's another question they're answering. Okay, um, that was one model. Uh, another model was the social flow of products and money. Who wants to tell me about that? We have heard from our Romanian crew. We've heard from Sierra Leone, Philippines, and Moldova. We haven't heard from the Philippines, from the uh, from the from the Romanian crew. No? Um, so it's about the cycle of the truth in Hibitans, you can say like that, representing the household and the farm. Huh? The household is can be represented one the individual or the groups. The farm is the same. And the farm is who produces the good and service. And the household is uh, and here, here I broke it. Can I help? Yeah. 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 Okay. 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 This, no, I said according to Wu, the simplest uh, circle through diagram illustrates an economy that contains only two kinds of inhabitants. Sure. Yeah. Come on. I say that it's the idea of how the products and services, those products and services uh, flow. Within uh, fairs, 
households, individuals, workers like you and spender like us. The idea is okay. If you have a firm and you have uh, you have a household in a firm, the, the the firm is making goods which are flowing to the household, and the household is providing the factors which make the goods. Right? So that's one way around. Then the money that's the goods going around. The money goes around the other way in that in that the household spends money on the goods which goes to the firm, and the firm pays the factors, pays my salary, for example. So it's a combination, a multiple combination of uh, goods, products, services, and how the cash flows. Yeah, the cash flows and how the stocks do it. Both would be both. Remember the, the green arrow was, I think, for, for the for the products and the blue for the money, or the other way around. You know, they, they, they colored them, basically. Okay? And was there any other model I taught you? No, 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 no. Okay, the most important one for your course then. Who wants to tell me about competitive advantage? No. You're the only one left who hasn't spoken. Come on, Nigeria is the main economy in, in Africa. See, Nigeria is a big economy, Sierra Leone is a very small economy. Yes? Mm -hmm. Much bigger economy than Sierra Leone, is that right? Much powerful country? Ah, uh, Africa, not only Sierra Leone. <laughs> <laughs> I think their job of rights is better than your job. Ah, uh, there we go. Then. <laughs> <laughs> I need them, uh, my Nigerian job of rights, I think only job of rights. I think mm -hmm. Nigerian job. Uh, for the food, all the specific Okay, come on. Tell me about competitive advantage. I don't know. Mine's got to be nice. Where are you? Okay, anybody at home can tell me something about competitive advantage, please. Uh, I need more understanding. Okay. Okay. Ernesto, would you like to tell me something? We speak a lot in the class, teacher. Sorry about it. Come on, somebody, tell me something about competitive advantage. The most important one I learned last time. Well, it was about the countries, right? Who we spoke about. Uh, Textiles, right? Was an example on uh, the competitive advantage. Yeah, like uh, who was Bangladesh? Who was producing more textile? Uh, the eighty percent of uh, world's textiles and uh, other. How can we determine which country has a competitive advantage in something? What's the method of determining if Bangladesh has a competitive advantage in, in textile production and clothes? Yes. How do we determine this? The opportunity cost. Okay, so the, the, the opportunity cost of one against another country, right? Uh, yeah. yeah, yes. What is the, the comparative advantage is if the opportunity cost for Bangladesh in cloth production is lower than, let's say, the USA. Okay, that's yes. the so You might find countries like um, you know, uh, there are kind of like, it's, 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 it's a case of not banana republic, but pajama republic nowadays. This is a, something that the Bangladeshi minister said, we are a pajama. Which republic. country, sorry? Pajama republic is Bangladesh. You understand? It's pajama republic. In other words, it makes pajamas, it makes clothes. Oh, right? pajamas. I thought you mean a country. Huh? Like, what country is that? Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Because they are, they, they are a lot of people in Bangladesh get jobs now through working in textile factories, right? Okay. Yes. So the, the idea is is that the comparative advantage of Bangladesh is, is is there. That's the stage play to that strength. Other countries, like you come from uh, Philippines, evidently they have warm water where there are a lot of seafood that you can you can fish for a lot of fishes and crabs and forms and things, and they have a comparative advantage. One of the comparative advantages is they have warm water. Century of the Meiji period, the Japanese concentrated on educating their population. Okay, so even when they were destroyed in the Second World War with Nagasaki and Hiroshima, they couldn't destroy the knowledge and the future of So it was only, only 20 years to come back and become a major economic power. Years. So by 65, 1945, they were wrong, by 1965, they were a major economic power. But they worked hard because they were very serious. Yeah. 
Okay, so that's the only that's the important moment, right? Okay, uh, we are. Yes, yeah, so we can't. Sorry, we can't hear you very well. I don't know where is your microphone. I don't understand nothing because we have problem with your micro. We have problem with your microphone or something like that. I don't know. Yes, I do. I have problems as well. Okay. Uh, Give me a second then. Uh, let me go and try and bring an expert. Just one second. You need to ask with the IT maybe or somebody there because. There's only five, there's only five of us, but there's probably 30 more. Not because. <laughs> So you understand the finance yet? So you can explain it. Okay. 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 That's why I'm getting him to do that. Yeah. But because like, you don't know, see, you are like, I don't know how long this goes. But if it's not the long that's your last class. That's what I tell me, man. What do you mean you don't know how long this goes? That's the most important bit. That's how it works out. That's how it's not going on. It's not just adding the numbers. That's the calculation. So how you get like a 1% yeah. percent with the All that 0 0.00. Yeah. I was just because. That's what I'm saying. So that would help you more. And then, like after you said that, then a minute later, you ask, "How did you get this figure?" Yeah. And the reason I got you to give us that figure at the bottom is to exactly give you what you ask. That's why. Yeah. No, I'm just saying, like you, you say, like you, when I ask him to do the bottom there, you said something like, "I don't know what." Why this would help? Not to just time that, but the problem of getting money. And so I think that's the most important thing. I don't think it's the most important thing because that will tell you how you get the tickets. Oh, because I don't have to do this. Yeah. That's what you do in this line. It's really what's on the slides, but we don't use straight stuff. That's what I'm trying to get. That's what I'm trying to get. Yeah. So we can take a screenshot. Even though it wasn't explained properly, yeah. with that figures, uh, on one time, we are going to be able to figure it out which is which. Because we can always like, put our phone down and we can call us how we can get that. Call us how we can get that. Yeah. Oh, without that, yeah. But without that, we wouldn't have to come up with a full figure so that's how we you okay. so, yeah. So basically, this figure is it's, it's because he he is getting a We'll have to call again later. I haven't been able to find anybody. No, the, I think the problem is that you have less microphones in the front, or because when Jeffrey is speaking, we can hear him clear more clear than yeah. when you are speaking. Yeah, I think the microphone is where is 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 the back. Where is the students? No, in the teacher class. Oh, I want to be close. I building because it's a vibration coming from the wall and this thing. That's why it happened. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, there doesn't give me a number to call, but it doesn't have anybody there. Um, yeah, it's okay now. It's okay. Ah, uh, no, it's okay. No, it's okay. It's okay. Okay. okay, so today's lecture is one of the most important parts of economics. Okay, we're going to do. We're going to do. Um, I'm going to separate the two. Well, I'm going to. Do supply, demand, and equilibrium point. This is the most basic model of microeconomics, and it, and it, and it also carries on. When we do macroeconomics, we'll look at uh, uh, something similar. Average of demand and aggregate supply, not exactly the same, but something similar. Okay? But this model is very important. Okay? A very important model. Okay, so let's start. Um, supply and demand. 
Okay. Um, now. So, yeah, one question. This model actually all business, economic business, is it just about the theoretical or economic? Well, the models are supposed to be models we apply practically. Because, because they, they're supposed to try, make sense in real life. So I'm going to teach you a model now, which was which, which is going to be an idea, and then we're going to try and apply it to real life. Yeah. Okay. So first of all, what are we talking about when we talk about competitive markets? Because this, which I'm going to teach you, it works if the market is competitive and not if it's not competitive. Okay. So by competitive markets, this is an important economic construct, construct in that a market in which there are many buyers and sellers of the same goods and services leading to competition between consumers and suppliers. It's not a case of that there's one major supplier and he or she can do anything they want. That's not the idea. It's not a case of, you know, uh, one, one company owns everything and that's it. No, there are many buyers and many sellers and because there are many people selling, there's a lot of choice and there's many people buying who are looking for the best bargain, right? So that competition is, according to econ economists, very healthy. It's very healthy because the supplier has to supply good products to get a, get a sale and, uh, and also at a good price to, to, to raise his, his or her demand, right? Okay. And also the buyer has to shop around looking for what's in the market to get the best bargain, right? Anybody ever gone shopping with their mother? Yeah. Their mother goes to six different stores, and we go to the first one, that's okay, let's buy it. No, the mother will go to six different stores, see the quality and the price and everything, and then buy, we'll buy one. I used to do that when I was younger, so. Yeah, you too. Yeah, I used to do that. I'm, I'm, I'm very bad with shopping, I find it very boring. So I think yeah, it's I do it quickly. Sometimes your the legs can hit, your feet can hit, if you're walking around, so. Yeah. My, my mother can look in six different stores before you buy something. And it's the same product in each one, you know, more or less. I can't see the difference. She can. So, you know. Okay, so that's the idea. That's what you're supposed to do in the competitive market. Look for each what each uh, supplier is offering, each shop is offering, and choose the one which is best for you. Mm. Okay, so this is supposed to be very healthy, a competitive market. Okay. In a competitive market, this is important. None of the buyers or sellers can influence the price at which the good or service is sold. You can't influence it because if there are many sellers and you sell more expensively than others, people will not come to you. So, right? And also, if you're a buyer, you have to buy at the if you going rate. Why is it more expensive than other? Well, that's the idea. The idea is that that's what the supplier wants. The supplier wants to make the most money possible, and the buyer wants the cheapest price possible. But if one of the suppliers supplies a price above the other suppliers, he may lose custom. Mm -hmm. Let's say this university is charging 9,500. The next one, in this building, there are two or three other universities. They charge the same price. If one of them charges more, they'll get their students. Because students are not stupid. They can go online and see all the prices. So nobody's stupid. They all know what the price what the game is. You know? They know what's out there in the market, right? OK. Uh, so. That's, that's important. There are many buyers and many sellers, and nobody can influence the price. In other words, in a competitive market, uh, uh, we, they, people are, are price takers. It's, they're not price makers. The, the, no one can be a price maker because the, the interaction, the competition of buyers and sellers looking for the most money in the case of supply and the cheapest product in the case of buyers, that competition is what determines the price. No one is a price, everyone is a price take, not a price maker. No matter if you're supplying, or your supplier, or your customer, buyers and sellers are both price takers. And I'm going to show you today how is that price established. What if the maker makes the price? No, I'm saying that in this competitive market, they can't be a maker. That's our definition. I'm going to show you in succeeding weeks where one or two companies are dominant, then they're price makers. You, know, you understand? Yeah, it, it, apples. Yeah, Apple is a price maker. That's in the case of monopolies or oligopolies. I'm going to teach you that in succeeding weeks. You say buyers and sellers are not price makers. Price takers. Price takers. Price takers. Because buyers and sellers, uh, I'm going to show you how we establish the price that everybody so takes. I don't understand. Price taker. You have to take the price the market gives. Oh, yeah. So because, because there's competition, if there's many buyers and sellers, there'll be an average price in the market. 
who is taking the price in the market? That's what we need to do today. Oh, brands, brands and sellers are price takers. Both, both, both the sellers and the buyers have to take the price the market gives. So what the market establishes is the price, everyone has to take it, whether you're selling or buying. And I'm going to show you how that's going to be established. So, selling or type of yeah. price. Both, both, the both, both the buyers and sellers in a competitive market are price takers. In a competitive market? Mm. Or price makers? Takers. And you also sorry, you also said that uh, if two companies like Apple and Samsung have monopoly, then they'll be price makers. I will teach that in succeeding weeks. Yeah, yeah I wanted to write it. No, that's what I'm asking. If it is a one or a few companies controlling everything, they can be price makers. So the they have price of makers. Makers. No, but it's same with this. Don't worry about that. Just I want this week. I just want this. I want the in a competitive market. Buyers and sellers are both price takers, and that's it. That, that's all I want. In succeeding weeks, I'll teach you the one. We, we don't want too many things in one place. In a competitive market, both buyers and sellers in a competitive market are price takers. Takers. You have to take the market price. You have no choice. I mean, create price takers. If you have your business or uh, before you put the price, you have to go to the market to check what's the price. That's me. Uh, yes, you, you go to the market. You know, and I say you want to buy, buy food. There's two markets. You know. You'll go there. There's many buyers, many sellers. So it's a competitive market. You're going you're gonna to have to take the price. If you want to buy five apples, you have to take the price in the market. Okay. So I believe it's going to clear. In a competitive market, both seller and buyer. Or sellers and buyers at a competitive market are price taking. Okay. So, so that's what we're interested in. We're interested in the idea of a competitive market. Now, here are supply and demand in competitive markets. When a specific market of goods or services is dominated by firms that can set, set or influence prices, okay, and we're gonna, we're gonna do this in succeeding weeks, not this week. So it's not a competitive market, in other words, where a few firms control it, like Amazon and Transport for London. Let's say you came here today on the train, Transport for London. Was there an alternative train? Was there a way to come here? Yeah. A train near the train. Oh, train. No. So there are, there are a monopoly of trains to get to, there's only one line to East and East India, right? Yeah. There's yeah. only one line. So I have a choice of one. Sometimes. Sometimes I leave three hours before. I I know, I know. Sometimes I I I I think it's um, <laughs> You said there's only one way to get here, but let's say someone's coming from East London and someone's coming from North London. They, they can get different routes, but to the same place, right? Well, that's fine. What I'm saying is that if, if there is, if there is, if it's dominated by one or, or a few firms, like trains are dominated in London by Transport for London. Me, I've, 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 I've lived here for 20 years or more, and, and, I, and I've always had to use the underground to get to work. You understand? So, so they're very dominant, and they'll set the price they want to set. When I was here in the 90s, uh, at the end of the 90s, you paid, I think, 19 or 20 pounds for a zone one to zone four travel. Weekly pass. Now it's over 50 pounds. Or, or that they can set what price they want to set. Sure. That's the idea. Now it was was still a time when it was uh, it was in all my government. No man was that. The DFL, like the trains. Okay, but that is when you're talking about a century ago, a long, long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, but the, the important thing then is that you, what we said earlier, okay, there is a competitive market, right? And then there's this situation which is not a competitive market. Look at these firms like McDonald's. Coca-Cola, KFC, this kind of food, don't you? This one will give you a heart attack, this one will give you diabetes. 
That's not the time. <laughs> okay, so the idea here is, is that these firms are, it's not a competition anymore. They, they, these, they, when a specific market of goods or services is dominated by firms that can set or influence prices. Amazon is a good example. Now I buy, I, my, my pleasure in life is books, right? So I buy books on Amazon. Do you think there's an alternative? I might want to buy, you know, there's a few subjects I, 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 I've studied and taught. One of them is philosophy, okay. Now do you think that I, if I wanted to buy some books about very obscure philosophy, I went to Amazon, immediately it was there. I paid for it, immediately, the next day it came to me like that. Yeah, I can't believe that they had it, right, for a start. But, but, but you know, they immediately, well, in other words, there's no service like Amazon, really. If you want to work, yeah. yeah. So, so you get the idea. There's a market where there's, I mean, there's very little competition for Amazon. Evidently, they're not a great company to work for, I've heard. There's a lot, there's a lot going on about how badly they treat their workers. Do you know there's a camera on you 24 hours a day? It, it looks at your, it looks at how much you lunch, sort of, and this and that, you know, they're watching you like that, or just watching you like a Maybe a big brother on his bike. Right. So the idea is then, um, okay. the idea is then that when a specific market of goods is dominated by a few firms that can set the, the, the prices, they're not price takers, they're price makers, they can set the price, like Amazon or TFL, then this is not considered a truly competitive market. Now we're going to speak about that a lot in succeeding lectures, we're just mentioning it here. But here are, here are firms, like Walmart is the largest supermarket in the world. Does it? Yeah, well, it's, it's only in America, right? In the world, that's in the world, right? So, so Walmart is like, you'll find it in China and you'll find it everywhere, you know. It's nuggets. Well, I thought that means nuggets. I thought Walmart's only based in America. No, they're not. There's no business. Outside the part of the Walmart. Yeah. So, so the idea is Walmart is number one in the world. Carrefour is the French supermarket, which is number two. Tesco is the number three supermarket in the world. You'll find in the countries you come from, uh, you'll find Walmart, Carrefour, Tesco, one or more of them, even in your countries. You'll know Walmart in uh, England or Nigeria. Look again. Let, let, let's have a look. Let's, let's see. Let's have a look. I don't think there's one in, let's have a look. I don't think there's one in, in London. Let's, let's have a look. Let's just say it's not in Nigeria. Let's have a look. Let's, let's see. Um, Supermarket chains in Nigeria, this one they do. Um, okay, uh, for the W. Let's have a look. Um, yeah. I don't know, tell us what owns these, they're not so. Maybe they all have Costco. No? There is no one like Nigeria. No, there isn't. No, there isn't. How about in Romania? Do you know what I mean? No. I hate in America. Yeah. 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 No, the first one, the first one, if you look up the page, yeah, those are the main ones, the, those regions in black, yeah. That's good, okay. Yeah, we did. Uh, okay, so that's the French one, okay. That's the second largest in the world. Yeah. So that's the idea. Can we try Philippines? Have a look. Um, okay. Walmart over here. That's Walter Mart, not Walmart. Okay. So they're basing on that. That could be that could be owned by by Walmart, you know. Okay, so you get the idea, these are all over the world. If you look at the big economies as well, let's look at the biggest economies. Okay, let's try China, for example. Economy number two. Um, the largest market share supermarkets is Walmart. You have Walmart in China. 
Okay, uh, so this is Google, uh, Walmart, an American company, American supermarkets, and Carrefour is there as well in China. Okay, let's try, let's see what they have in Germany. Germany has. I'll tell you know where it is. Um, let's look at. Uh, Walmart locations around the world. Okay. Okay, so there are this many, look how many Walmarts there are. My God. <laughs> That's going to be a. Um, so, okay, today it employs 1.6 million people in the US. Um, <laughs> Is there Walmart in England? Yes, yeah, there is. Is the Walmart. Walmart. <laughs> so, uh, well, there's, a, there's Walmart in England. Uh, is there Walmart in Japan? Does anyone have any stores in Japan? Hi, hi, hi. Good God. Is there Walmart in Russia? You saw the Walmart. Not in Russia, but not in Germany, not in South Korea, not in Russia. Right? So, so there are some, not in India, oh, that's interesting. There's a Tesco in India, though. Okay? So you get the idea. These are actually, what these are is what we call multinational companies, yes? They're around the world. Globalization means Walmart is in many countries in the world. Carrefour, I was in, in, in Doha, in Qatar, they had a Carrefour there. Right in the French supermarket in the Arab world. And a very big one, a big powerful, you know? How is that actually the It's a French, French version of Tesco. Yeah. Okay, so that you get that idea then. So that what we what we established then, we've established there's such a thing as competitive market, many buyers and sellers, and there's such a thing as a not non-competitive market where there are not many buyers and sellers. Okay, um, the microphone is on the TV screen. That's what I am looking at the TV on screen. Okay, let's, let's try and call the number again. Okay, let's carry on. Uh, okay, now then, we're now going to look at the model the demand curve, the supply curve, what causes them to shift, and when are they in equilibrium. Okay, so this is important. This is the important part of today's lecture. The law of demand, if other factors stay the same, this is important. Heterist, Arabist, other things being equal, okay? Okay, if everything remains the same and prices rise, demand generally falls. Is that right? But let's say today the cafe downstairs gives you a coffee for three pounds. Let's say tomorrow they charge you six pounds. Could we, could, would we expect that tomorrow their demand will fall significantly because the price has gone from three pounds to six pounds? Yeah. Definitely, definitely. Right, so that's definitely the case. So, what we're saying, the law of demand then, is as prices rise, demand generally falls. People generally buy less. And anybody, uh, I don't get that. I don't understand. You pay three pounds for a coffee. Yeah. And then tomorrow they say we want six pounds. Yeah. For the same coffee. Will you buy it? For six pounds? No, I'll put it on the third day. They, they do it. To be expected to rise or fall. Okay, so that, that if the price goes up, basically, if price goes up, demand goes down. Is that right? Yeah. That's it. Okay, and conversely, as prices fall, demand generally rises. You know, when they have a sale, yeah. people buy more, right? Okay. So this is called movement on the demand curve. That's the law of demand. The law is price goes up, demand goes down. Price goes down, demand goes up. That's the general rule of demand. The law of demand, okay? Do we agree with that? Let's say this course costs 9,500. This ends up costing 12,000. The demand will go down. You must be joking. But the universities are charging 9,500 and you want 12,000. You must be having a laugh. Yeah, but there's no different prices in unis, are they? 
It's all the same. Bricks. Yeah. Well, but mostly, if you want to go to the London School of Economics, it's going to cost more. How is it? I'm going to put it I still want to study. I still want to study. But to do a one-year masters will cost me about twenty thousand. Yeah, masters. That's it. But then in uh, like degree. Yeah, yeah. Right. Masters here is not twenty thousand, is it? Oh, this year I never give you that. Um, I think my old university brings me into the I'm sure if you heard of it. Yeah. I think the price is that six grand. Yeah, because that's private. That's not part of the. That's not a, a, a university. They, you can have university accredited degrees, but they're, they're, they're still a private college, right? No, no, university. Yeah. Universities have a nationally set. Um, you know, general, some of them are special universities, but it's a different thing. Yeah. Okay, so that's the idea. Because of this generally, uh, of this general law of demand, the demand curve is normally downward sloping. Do you remember what I told you about a negative relationship as one rises and another falls? Here it is. So we're downward sloping as price goes up, demand goes down. Yes? So if price is 40 pence per apple, we're going to sell 2,500. If the price goes up to 80, we're only going to sell about 1,300, right? Yeah. So the graphic representation of the quantity demanded of a good or service is on pricing. It shows the relationship between quantity demanded and price. A negative relation. As one rises, the other falls. Remember that from the last, last, last lecture? So the higher the price, the mm -hmm. higher the lower the sales. Yeah. Oh, that's right. It's called a negative relationship. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's go back on. We didn't do this slide. I just want to show you what negative relationship was. Now, quantity demanded. The actual amount of a good or service that consumers are willing to buy at a specific price. So let's, let's look at that. At the price of 60, consumers are willing to buy 2,000. Right? That's the quantity demanded at that price. Uh, the quantity demanded usually changes up or down with price changes, with a negative relationship meaning that when the price goes up, the demand goes down. This is shown by movement on the demand curve. Here we are. As price is going up, you notice demand is going down. The higher the price, the lower the demand. Can everybody read this graph? Do you all understand this graph? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. As for, let's say, for example, you're selling an organic store in Nantesbridge. Okay, like, the, 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 there is something called a normal good, and then there's something called, you know, uh, something uh, 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 we, we call, there are three types of goods. One is called an inferior good, like if you got a prime mark or pound land, you yeah, cheap, cheap stuff, you call it cheap shit, right? You know? yeah. <laughs> then there is normal goods. And then there is there's goods that you have another name for something like priority goods, uh, you know, goods for posh people's goods, yeah. Yeah. Uh, like upper class goods. I'm going to give you various names for it, okay? okay. You know, uh, but basically, that's the idea. If you go to Knightsbridge and you have a coffee, okay, that's a posh people's coffee. Yeah. It's not going to be like a uh, like a two pound coffee there or three pound coffee here. Though this one should be expensive because it's a business district actually. Yeah. yeah. So if you go to Barking, you're not going to pay more than two fifty where I live. Not more than two fifty for a coffee. Okay. Hmm. What's the term you use for a cheap goods again? Inferior goods. Inferior goods. No, no, the cheap one. Inferior, inferior is the expensive, right? No, no. Inferior, inferior, man. Inferior, inferior, ah, okay. inferior. inferior. Crap goods. Probably the cheap one. Pound line, no, pound line, or, or prime line. I still want. So in a way, it looks like the market kind of puts the price. Ah, yes, yes. Behind the curtain, sort of. Yeah, because I mean, in a poor part of town, people are going to expect cheap things. If you go to if you go to nice food like the same, then people are going to people are going to expect to pay five pounds for a coffee maybe. Yeah, you know? and they can do that because yeah. they've got the money for it. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. because I, I I used to have a lesson in nice food, um, um, and 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 uh, because because it was a uh, one of my teachers she was uh, you know living behind nice food in a flat, right? So I used to go there. Yes, I mean. Uh, Knightsbridge um, Harrods. Harrods is full of Arabs and Chinese people. Yeah. Not rich people in other words. Yeah. 
So, you know, and then if you buy like one belt for your trousers, 200 pounds in Harry's. Yeah, they like to get it for like one, seven, one, eight. So, you know, basically, you know, what stuff in it, you know, like, but the, the, there's not many posh things I like. I don't. I'm not, I've got that taste. The only thing I like is that it's expensive is I like a tea and coffee. And there's a place called Fort and Mason, which supplies it, supplies it up in the back. Now, I, even that's not very expensive. I get one packet, like like Tesco, 40 tea bags, one pound. There, 10 tea bags, 10 pounds. You know, it's, it's a bit about 10 times the price. Mm. But it is a very high quality tea. And there is something you can buy, like I think it's like 200, they have a one tea, 200 pounds, 200 pounds for I think a, a few ounces. You know, it's the most expensive tea. Tea. Yeah, tea, tea. Was it expensive tea? Yeah, 200 pounds for, you know, a little, little. I don't know what it is. I don't know if you're going to have an orgasm if you drink it. I don't know what it is. <laughs> but, but, you know, I, I, I've never, I've never, uh, I've never, but, you know, still, I'm, I'm still paying 12, 13, 14 pounds for a week's tea. Yeah. And that's not bad. Well, you can't say that I'm very, uh, you know, posh or anything like that. Yes, that's what you like. Is that's what your preference is. I do, I mean, this is the only thing I have which is a bit posh. That's all. The only thing I like. Um, um, just repeat the second and third. I would use, please. I'm only making a note for my uh, vocabulary. Yeah, okay. Uh, there is there is uh, inferior goods, uh, normal goods, and now the, the, there is a name we're going to give the other ones. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at my because I want to give you the name of the goods. So there's seven names for my priority goods. Yes. And I want to know what yours is. Hang on a second. Oh, it's actually there? Tell me. So they are divided by um, social class, sort of. Yes, yes, yes. Inferior goods. Inferior goods, normal goods, that's for 70 for one person. Okay. Uh, normal goods, inferior goods, and. Um, no, tell me that. Okay, so we've got normal inferior and nothing else, okay? Yeah, that's probably it. No, 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 there is, there is a Scots video. I know. Um, okay, so we've got videos like crime as like the inferior one. Would you say H&M is normal? Uh, well, I would say Primark is inferior. I would say if you go to a normal store, the, 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 like if you go to a normal super, normal market, a uh, uh, well, market, like yeah. a market, market. Yeah. Average, average normal goods. Yeah. But then you would say that um, Primark is a normal good. Yeah, but no, no, Primark should be inferior because the cheapest one. Oh. Uh, Jeff, think of quality when you say inferior, like because in quality. Yeah, that's the idea. Inferior is a poor quality. Um, so, what would you class as a normal quality then, Corina? Marks and Spencer's is normal. Evidence? <laughs> HM evidence? <laughs> I can't find it, okay? That's okay, whenever it pops up your head, it's okay. Let's try let's try this way. Um, yeah, by the way, Fahima says she'll be here later because she's in hospital. The other term that uses is Giffen goods. What is that? Giffen, I'll just put it on my Okay, luxury. You want luxury goods, that's right. Okay. That's very good. That's A name for it. You're going to find other names, okay? So it's inferior good, normal good, or luxury good. Okay. 
Okay, so luxury good, let me give you an example of luxury good. Luxury good is something like... It's actually like like uh, bags from uh, Louis Vuitton, like clothes from Chanel, like an expensive car, an expensive watch, like a Rolex, right? Yes, yes, yes that's right. Or like, the, like that tea that you just said, yes, like the 200 pounds tea. Yeah. Or like... But even though you know, anything in form of waste is supposed to be luxury good. I mean, yeah. Yeah. But try, try it sometime. Try, try it. Buying the tea, all the biscuits are very good, the cakes are nice, you know. I would only try it if my parents buy it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now. All the time when I sick is more expensive. <laughs> and my like it's more good, more organic, or it uh, can be the material more... Uh, yeah, yeah. And the organic, quality more... Right. Organic is a good example. Yeah. Organic is a good example. That's a luxury good, because you're paying, instead of paying five pounds, you're paying ten pounds or something, you know. I used to go to organic shop, organic uh, uh, by buying rice and beans and things like that. You know, I don't know if you know Planet Organic. Planet Organic is a, a shop where you can get, you know, you can do, if, if, if I'm working somewhere and it's late, I go to Planet Organic, I'll get some lasagna, some, some mm -hmm. salad, some, some rice and beans and that kind of thing. Like nice, nice healthy food. You know, instead of paying five pounds for a pizza, you pay ten pounds for that. So, so you know, but the, so the, that's another example. So, so, ladies, my advice to the ladies is you must marry a millionaire and then you'll be. Can you not encourage them? You'll have one month three goods for the rest of your life. Can you, can you not encourage them? My, my friend married a woman, you know what she said? She says she wants to, she wants to ha own her own house, she wants a honeymoon, she wants him to buy her a ring, <laughs> and she doesn't want to work again. <laughs> Uh, she said uh, for the Chinese, like or Lamborghini or everything. Here is more actually the brand, the brand. Yeah, the brand. Uh, it's it's so much more money for the brand rather than the quality. Right, this is a difficult discussion, but yes, it's brand. Gucci might not be any better than anything else. Because yeah. uh, you know, one of my Chinese students, they like brands of Chinese, right? Yeah. To so call Gucci back. Horrible bag, you pay two or three pounds for a horrible bag. No, no, the movie is not like a brand. It's a brand. It's a brand. It's a brand. But yeah, I mean, it's a brand. It's a brand. You have bags that are 4,000 pounds and more. Yeah. But what I'm saying, what I'm saying is, you don't have to like it, it's just that it's the brand, right? Exactly. Did you know a few years ago there was, ah, there was a friend? Like LV, for example, those kind of brands, they, they set emotions. Rather than product of art. Sure, sure. No. Like they feel like people that can buy them and afford them, they feel good about it. Sure, no doubt about it, no doubt. But they, it is like that. Yeah, but what these cards, which you buy, they, you can, uh, they are made in li limited edition, that's why they feel more unique than others. What you were asking, she was saying, it's, is it quality? I said, no, it's a brand. So a brand doesn't have to be quality. It might even be to us crap, right? Yeah. Like, have you seen those things like those people who go on TV? For one dress, one of those horrible dresses, 5,000 pounds. Yeah, that was that they used for fashion show. Yeah, and nobody else would wear it. You, would really, you wouldn't really wear it like to go outside. No, no, really. Day. And it might even not be very quality, even, you know. You know so it's just a matter of brands. Brands are another matter. The one answer. It's a different issue. Brand is a brand and quality are not the same thing. But like, do you feel so shame about quality with brands? No. You wouldn't be that. See the thing where I'm laughing. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. I can see it. Two hundred. Okay. So let's have a look at that's that that's the that's the idea of demand. Oh. Now, in your groups, what I want you to do, I'm going to give you a job to do. In your group, discuss your demands for goods at a typical grocery store like Tesco, Little Morrison's. What goods do you demand? What goods have you noticed that have variable prices, up or down, week by week? Is there anything that varies week by week? What goods have stable prices? Okay, why do you think there's a difference? I want you to actually answer this question. In a supermarket, what has a stable price and what changes week to week week? Okay. I think it depends how fast it um, uh, is this the group is <laughs> And secondly, what goods have you noticed have discounts or promotions? Why? I want you to answer I want you to answer two and three. Okay? Two first, and if you have time, carry on with 
What have you noticed that there's discounts and promotions, and why? Why do supermarkets have discounts and promotions? Okay, but I really am interested in question one. I'm interested in what goods vary week to week, and what goods have stable prices. Now I have, I have all of you form a circle here, please, and I'm going to put you in three groups in the breakout room. Okay, and we'll visit the breakout room after ten minutes to see how you're doing. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Hi. How are you? Good, good. How are you? Terrible day for, for the class today. Mm. Because I don't understand nothing. It's, it's with delay, the voice of the teacher. I don't know. In the first class, right? Wah. Wah. Terrible. So, bah. Mm. In your group. Discuss your demand for the goods on typical grocery store. For example, Lanut, Tanut, uh, or you, Ernesta. What? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't understand nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm you just lost. watching, you know, like cartoons. <laughs> okay. Um, Me as well. I've been trying, but I don't know. I think uh, um, vegetables have uh, sometimes changed the price, so they have sales. Yes, yeah. They usually have three for or two for one for, for one like pound. if you buy three for ten pounds or. or some, or sometimes when the expiry date is finished, they make it. I think reduce. because vegetable expiry date is short, yeah. that's why they put sales, mm -hmm. or um, that the demand would be higher, quicker to sell. Yeah. No, the, the first question is, in your group, discuss your demands for goods at typical grocery store, for example. Normally, when I go to the supermarket, always, my demand is, for example, toilet paper. Oh, no. Not every day, but, uh, because it's not normal, no? But food, uh, but bread, mm. bread, cheese. Yeah, and they're asking, is the price staying the same week by week for these goods? I know. Yeah, normally it's the same. And which ones, for example, we find in stores which change? Like sometimes it's two pounds, sometimes it's one pound fifty. I don't know. I'm trying to, I'm trying to remember, but normally... Me too, because... Always maybe the meat... Uh, um, yeah, maybe the meat changed prices, right? Or maybe the products for clean. Uh, mm, I don't know. Uh, no, I think it's not meat because meat always the, is the same price. Really? Not, yeah. I think it's grocery. I can't. Uh, we need to remember what we need to remember what products always is an offer of. Uh, the the pen the pen of what time in the year for some sometimes it's yes, more expensive yeah. I don't know the banana yeah. or uh, well, let's say vegetables change price vegetable yeah and sometimes it's oil rice making reduce bah. offer make offer for some time for uh, or let's say um, wines. Um, oh, alcohol. Yeah. Wines change, change price as well. I think the things which is important, imported from other countries. Yeah. Uh, price, uh, yeah. Yes, for example, vegetables, mm -hmm. uh, special uh, with yeah. uh, banana, for example, because this banana is coming. And what's, what stays the same price, for example? 
always. I would say washing liquids for clothes, always the same price. No, no sometimes no? making as well reduce, no. Yeah, it's a good question okay. because the supermarkets always change the price of all, but... Yes, yeah. But yes. the same price, because uh, the supermarket have uh, products for the first... The more, ne the more important necessary for the people is, for example, for eating or for... I don't know, wait a minute. Mm. This is product of um, of first need, first need uh, with food, with uh, cream of uh, milk, mm. bread. Yeah. Uh, this kind of things, the menu, the expiry date is. Ah, the, the finish, always, yeah. always the 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 the, the seafood. The seafood normally change the price. Change, yeah, especially in the evening time. Yeah, yes, the, so seafo the seafood. The yeah. seafood. Yeah. The seafood. No, sometimes sure. it's cheap. Sometimes more expensive. Always it change the price mm. because. Change, yeah. The pen, the pen of the of the what um, mm, what is this? The pen of the season in the year, you know. Mm -hmm. For example, winter or summer. Or yes. Yeah. The fish food, yeah, and um, more to the meat. And um, 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 um. hey, in Christmas, the turkeys, for example, is is more expensive because it's more demand of the people, you know. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Because in Christmas everybody like go to the supermarket for turkey uh, or for, uh, but normally for example, and yeah. 24 of December, the price is very high of the turkey, but if you go now, it's 12 pound. It's normal, yeah. It's 10 pound. Uh. And Nesta, you take notes about this conversation? I'm listening. I know we talk about turkey <laughs> on Christmas. <laughs> yes, and uh, turkey for Christmas and uh, chocolate mm. maybe in the... Okay, but what about the prices? They all the time the same. I can't think of anything like all the time we pay the same for what? Bread, one pound, always bread costs one pound. Yeah, always is the same price. Always. Yeah. Uh, mm. uh, flour, the same price, let's say. Sometimes Sugar, the, the same <sighs> price. No, it doesn't change price on this. Yeah. Mm. The last question is, uh, what goods have you noticed that have discounts or uh, discounts or promotions? No, which expiry date is short? Yeah, like we was talking, fish. Yeah. Um, one day before, one day before of the spy, yeah. You can yes, but sometimes they make offers, like you buy three for for for. For, for example, for, for example, when there is chain of the season. For example, uh, winter to so, to spring or something like that. This product is don't have more demand, and, and it's very important to put more, very low price for this product. And for example, I don't know, but um, independent season, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For yeah. example, sometimes making offer for 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 example for celebration like for Christmas or. Uh, Guys, I'm gonna miss five minutes. I need to move my car. Yeah, don't If worry. the teacher comes, can you let him know, please? Don't worry, don't worry, man. See you. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Ernesta, um, yes. What products? What products? You uh, you notice that have discounts or promotion? Why do you think with promotions? So because of the quick expiry date. Yeah, but, but I recently go and uh the Tasco brand or Tasco one. It's okay, but I prefer the area because that is the quality of the How can you tell? Because I'm also gonna watch my phone and try it out. 
Oh my god. It's crazy. <laughs> Many people are speaking at the same time. I I don't remember exactly what promotions uh, normally because for example in the Lidl you see promotions mm. but it's no it's it's, it's uh, for example tools maybe maybe the But mi- uh, now maybe we, we talk about just grocery shop I think Ah it's groceries ah okay okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, yes Yes different Yeah, I think so it's true. Um As I notice, they do promotions on juice. Mhm. Then they do promotions on meat. Tesco's for example, they do uh, free for 10 pounds. Uh-huh. As the same. Yep. You buy three pieces whatever and you get for 10 pounds. I think you have more experience to me about this. Yeah, of course. <laughs> how many how many times for week you go to the Tesco? Um once per week. <laughs> okay. Um promotion um, of groceries. Uh, oof. No, always in Tesco for example the promotion is is this the the when the some product is too close of or finish the live Yeah. Teacher, and and this moment I oh sorry oh, I, I heard many people speaking at the same time. Oh, yes, we can speak because this is on in the class people talking and we can hear it. Okay, come on. We, c- we we I think we have all information, no? Yes, yes, it's just. It's uh, not, not hard. Oh, the second one. What? Um, why? Why do you think there are different? No, what does? Ah, okay. Uh, what good seem to the have stable prices? Ah, you say, for example, rice, yes, pasta, said, uh, oil, bread. Yeah, bread, pasta. Rice. Tuna. Tuna, potatoes. Potatoes, yeah. Always one bag, two pounds. Or yeah, yeah, always. One this, yes. Um, and the well, uh, variable price uh, is difficult. I need to go more to the supermarket. <laughs> <laughs> Because uh, now for me, all have the same price. Always is the same. I never see discounts, not, nothing. Uh, maybe the drinks, the beers, the mm. al- alcohol, maybe cigarette. I don't know. I don't know. Ernesta, we need to go the, to the class because online and now it's difficult to stand this teacher. I am going on Tuesday. Are you going? No, man, it's terrible. Let's go on Tuesday. Poof. And this morning, I don't stand nothing. You stand something this morning? No. No, it's so difficult. No, I I asked with many people and the and and my WhatsApp with with Feshwana, with Jeffrey. Everybody is mm. angry this morning. Darling, I see you yeah. in class. See you.
So let's then discuss why are some things um, variable prices week to week in the supermarket? Why why do some products have stable prices week to week? Can anybody tell me either either online or in class? Well, let's start with the first one. What is it that has variable prices? That's what we have find it difficult. But I guess we have let's our say, foods. They say let's say seasonal um, products. Or milk. They might have variable prices. Okay. Uh, can you give me an example of seasonal products? Uh, Melon, for example. Mm -hmm. No, so they are because strawberry, it's, yeah. Uh, yes. yeah, in the summer you can find them cheaper. In the winter, it's a bit more banana. pricey. Yeah, mm -hmm. for, uh, okay. okay. Uh, Corina, what do you say about this? Uh, I would actually. Uh, I would say that is the 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 short uh, the life shelf it is. Then they will have variable prices like vegetables or uh, would be fruits uh, we're thinking of diary like yogurts, milk uh, even bread okay. and then you will have um, products like alcohol or uh, tinned uh, or dry food that uh, has longer life, longer shelf life so then they will have a more um, Table price. I think I think that goes on the discounts and promotion, though, right? Like uh, we would. Let's just take that answer first. Okay, first take that answer. Generally, that's the the idea. But what's perishable? Okay, when it gets close to its sell by, by date, you have to lower the price, right? Chocolate is low. Yeah, you have to lower the price, obviously, because uh, let's say you have something like you know a a a, a exotic fruit, let's say. A mango, for example, they, they don't last that long, right? Uh, so, so, you know, only, only a perishable good will be variable in price. When it comes to something like, uh, you know, something that can't really, uh, um, uh, uh, will not go off. Tinned stuff lasts a long time, okay? Yes. So, so any tinned product will last a long time, so you can have pretty stable prices for tinned stuff, okay? So that, that's the main idea. Any other ideas? No, we, just, uh, we did say like essential stuff, like for example, rice. It doesn't go back. Uh, is it like a no, rice, is, rice will last a long time. Yeah. Yeah. So rice, mm -hmm. one packet of rice can last months. Mm -hmm. I mean, pasta do have expiration date on them, but they do actually still last yes. time. I mean, like, even though the packet would say expired yesterday, you can still use it mm -hmm. or even, even a week or month, as long as it's not rotting, you can still use it really. But people just now these days they actually look at the day and they think, oh, it's bad, even though it's that. Yes, but you as a company, as a business, cannot really sell to your buyer like that when the yeah. time is so close. So you have to lower your price in order to uh, like minimize your stock, right? And your loss, indeed. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh any other ideas about that, about stable prices and uh, uh, variable prices? Yeah, when you think of other uh, products like chocolate, biscuits as well, why do they go on sale? Why their price varies? I think it's for people to, you know, indulge in them, buy them, because they don't need it every day, isn't it? But you'll still find them on offer. I think it's for stock reason because you don't want to have as a company money stuck in one product that it stays all the time on your shelf. So then you have to do this, uh, so you can you know the money flows. <laughs> they go round and round the circle. Okay, stock stock having higher high stocks is not a great idea. Okay, that's true. Uh, can I ask one other thing? Nobody seems to have mentioned about Christmas. How about Oh, is, there yeah. is there something at Christmas that goes up in price? Is it just come from talking about Turkey. Turkey prices goes very high. Right, okay. Everyone wants to eat turkey at Christmas. Even I eat turkey at Christmas. But you don't give actually like, <laughs> like you don't get to see much turkey in superstores at the minute, is it? I mean you do get see you, you can buy turkey but not like the millions. Yeah, you should yeah, if, it goes to, if it goes to supermarkets in, in, in December time, 
There'll be lots yeah, of that's what I'm saying. It's like, it is, but the rest of the year. Time, so that's what we're saying. We're saying that, that basically what will happen is the prices of certain goods to do with seasonal goods are going to be high at certain times in year. Okay. Um, you know, so so also ice cream is more on summer, I guess. <laughs> yes, I guess I agree. That. How about you say ice, 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 ice runs out on summer. Price of ice, and uh, you know, like there's a time when you want just like one pound for a big bag of ice, mm. cube of ice, and now during summer you sell it at two fifty or three pounds even. Yeah. Okay, uh, but how, how about the idea of Green Easter then? Is there anything at Easter? Then? Eggs, 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 eggs. Uh, chocolate. I got bunnies. Hot cross buns, maybe? Oh, what? Hot cross buns. That's a, that's a pretty a bun with a cross on it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you get the idea. Now, last, last thing we're going to discuss, right, is what goods have you noticed have discounts or promotions? Uh, As we spoke earlier, the products that are um, close to the expiration basically are not. Okay. That's right. Rather than, rather than eggs. How about promotions? Let's take the other promotions. What, what, what would you promote? The product that doesn't actually sell much. So you promote them, you give them discounts so that people will buy more. Okay. Okay. Let's, let's, let's listen to the first one. All, um, all the product from the, the dry store, basically. Then, for example, the, um, everything who has a long uh, shelf, shelf life, I will say, because we're not buying uh, regularly, then they don't want to have too much stock. Then the best way to reduce the stock and re generate more sales is to uh, give some promotions. That's a yeah, way of thinking. The same goods on, on the shelf continue. They don't want, they don't want, so sometimes if the goods not selling well, they promote them, right? Can I give you another example? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. How about the idea of new goods, something new, right? So we don't really know what it is, but they promote it, right? To get us, to get us aware of it. Like a taste of basically. Yeah, basically that's a little bit half the price. Mm -hmm. uh, a few years ago, it's more than 10 years ago, they, they, they started selling like really big cookies, right? Like cookie almost like the size of a plate. They sold it, first of all, very cheaply. Like it was like one pound for one big cookie. And they had excellent ingredients. You know, uh, sweetened with concentrated grape juice, very nice organic big cookie. <laughs> so I tried it, but, but because people liked it, they doubled the price. So it was cheap at first. When they when they cooked us, when they cooked us in, then they then they doubled the price. That kind of idea. That's good marketing. First, you get the person interested. When he starts eating or she starts eating it, right? Then you raise the price. So and they they slowly changing the ingredients later on. <laughs> you wouldn't even realize that you are paying the same price. the idea. the idea. And people don't know it. Okay, then you have to promote it. When I was at school, we we thought it was very funny. They brought out a flavor of crisps. Prawn cocktail flavor. We said, ha, 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 prawn cocktail, you must be joking. That's hilarious. But I remember that. It's not funny to you, is it? It was funny to us when we were school. Yeah. yeah. It, for, for us, it was funny. What, what a stupid flavor for crisp. I understand cheese flavor, the salt and vinegar flavor, ready salted. What is, what is, prawn? it's quite tasty, prawn cocktail. It's a nice thing. It's a lot of fun. You know, one more promotion, the biggest, when the store is closed, yeah. they want to move another That's part. Sick. They yeah. make a big promotion yeah. for like 57 people. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you do that marketing on Anyway, he's saying that closing soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but ending never close. <laughs> 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 you go there a year later, they still have that closing, closing down sale. Soon is a very relative. <laughs> closing down sale. Soon might be just a game. 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 Okay, so okay, we've got the idea here. Does anyone say, want to say one last thing before I close this one and get on with the... Anybody die to say anything? No? Okay. So we've got the idea there. So the idea in the context of demand and supply, we have to look at pricing. Pricing uh, low, pricing high, price, you know, what, what do we have to... What, what has a stable price? What has a variable price? What has a discount? What has a promotion? That's all part of this subject. Now, let's have a look. Right, let's look at, we've spoken about shift, when have we spoken about the demand curve, we've already spoken about um, 
to her movement on the demand curve. Yeah. In the previous slide, we said that if the price goes up, the demand goes down. If the demand goes, if the price goes down, the demand goes up. That's a movement on the demand curve. How about not movement on the demand curve, but a shift of the demand curve? That's of the whole demand curve. Okay. Now, what does that look like? Before I speak about it, what we mean is something like this. Now, here is the demand curve D1. If we have a shift of the of the demand curve, not on the demand curve, not up and down the demand curve because of price, but the whole demand curve goes from D1 to D2, that means that there is an increase in demand, right? If the whole demand curve goes from D1 to D3, there's a decrease in demand. Now the question is, okay, if you have something like that, uh, uh, um, a different demand curve, what could cause that? What could cause you to go from D1 to D2? What could be the cause of that? Now I'm going to give you. Can I? Uh, okay. But that happens on limited products, right? No, 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 no. It's not to do that. Okay. Marina, what do you want to say? Um, it can be price. It can be quality. No, this is something else. I'm going to explain to you. This is the reasons that we have. These reasons. There are five principal factors that cause a shift in the demand. So the whole world moves. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay, so we're now going to discuss those. Let's let's look at these five one by one. Okay. Uh, um, okay. 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 Right. Right, so let's have the first one, a change in price for related goods and services. Would you agree that if Coca-Cola and Pepsi are competitors, if the price of Coca-Cola goes up, what will people do? Well, the demand, demand of Pepsi will go up. Because now Coca-Cola is up in price, so people will buy more of the one, of the, of, the, of the actual competitor, the substitute good, right, which is still at a lower price. Is that right? So let's say both Coke and Pepsi are one pound, Let's say Coke goes up to one pound ten, more people will buy Pepsi. Pepsi. Right? I'm ready to say Coke. Depends on the level of customers. Because you can't even actually. But, but Jeff, but we were looking for laws here. The law. The law is that if the price of one goes up, people go to the one that's cheaper, which is equivalent. This is called an ideal economy. Yeah. Okay, now look at this. A substitute good, okay. If is now substitute would mean something like Coca-Cola and Pepsi. So in the case of Coca-Cola and Pepsi, okay, if the price of one goes up, you know, the price of one of the goods, uh, if a rise in the price of one of the goods leads to an increase in the demand for the other good. So if a price of Coca-Cola goes up, the demand for Pepsi goes up. That's because they're substitutes. So if two goods are substitutes, the rise in the price of one leads to the increase in the demand of the other. Automatically. You know, basically, if there's a thousand people buying Pepsi and a thousand people buying Coke, right? If, if the price of pe pe Coke goes up 10%, the demand for Pepsi will go up by 20, 30, 40, 50, 100. Yeah. Well, why not, if that happens, why wouldn't Pepsi cheapen their products so more, people, more and more people can buy it? We can. Nothing will stop them. But actually, Coca Cola is more than the price is more higher than yeah. Pepsi. No, yeah. but the people, they. They get the Coca-Cola, even if the price is higher. Yes, we're not talking about that. We're saying that if there's a thousand people buying Coca-Cola and a thousand people buying Pepsi, if, if Coca-Cola raises its price ten percent, the, the demand for, for Pepsi will go up. Well, if Pepsi becomes strategic and like so does the price. But you know, all that's possible. Okay. What we're not trying to establish here is the general law. Okay. The general law of demand. Okay. Okay, and complementary goods, these are goods which go together. Uh, they put shampoo and conditioner here, okay? So, for example, when you buy shampoo, you buy conditioner. I've never used conditioner in my life, but okay. Uh, but I'm a man, right? Men don't use conditioner. This is for ladies, right? Hey, I use conditioner. <laughs> <laughs> I don't use conditioner. I'm an alpha male. Okay, now, anyway, just putting that aside. The idea is these are complementary. You buy a shampoo and you, you, you know, okay, let me buy one shampoo and buy the conditioner too. They go together, right? So in this case, if the price of one goes up, okay, if the price of one goes up, then the demand of that will go down and the demand of the 
complementary thing will go down too. So if a, if you have a in the case of complementary goods where you buy one with the other, if a rise in the price of one of the goods leads to a decrease in demand of the other. So that this means that let's say shampoo was one pound and conditioner was one pound. If shampoo goes up in price, okay, then the demand of shampoo will go down, but the demand of the actual complementary good will also go down because people buy them together, mm -hmm. right? That's, so that's so these are two ideas that when it comes to substitute goods and complementary goods, we have to understand each one where each one falls. Yeah. So with one, the price of one going up leads to the demand of the other one going up, and here the price of one going down leads to the uh, uh, the price of one going up leads to the demand of the other one going down. So try to understand that with an example. Okay. So keep the examples in your head. So if the price of coke goes up, the demand for Pepsi goes up. And if the price of shampoo goes up, the demand for conditioner goes down. With the, comp the complementary then the big one, then we buy them together. Yes. If one goes up and one goes down. Um, no, no, that, that's not what we ask. That's not. That's not, you're not getting it. If the price of if you buy shampoo and conditioner together, if yeah. the price of shampoo goes up, the demand for shampoo goes down. Demand. Also, the demand for the complementary goes down. So let, let's say shampoo was one pound. Let's say it goes to two pounds. Yeah. People will buy less shampoo, yeah. but also because they used to buy the conditioner with the shampoo, that the conditioner will also go down. In, in, in I, I get that. Yeah. So let's say I buy links and then I buy a conditioner. Shower, link shower jar and conditioner. If the link, the past the links goes down, that means the, the conditioner will go down as well. People don't buy them together, right? Um, what it is, if the price of the links goes up, the demand of links will go down. But the, 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 demand, yeah. the, the demand of the complement will also go down. So let's say links, if the price of link goes up, the demand for it goes down. Yeah. And the comp let's say that a comp complementary shampoo that people normally buy the links with, that will also go down yeah. because the price has gone up the links yeah. and then the demand for it goes down. Yes. The reason why it goes down is because it's, it's a high price. Yeah. People don't want to, aren't willing to pay that price of the increasing value of the links. Yeah. Okay, I get it. Okay. So, most of the time, there are some things the price will go up or still the demand. No well, what we're trying to do here is establish a general law. Oh, yeah, okay. That's it. The general law of demand is what we're There probably will always be exceptions, you know? Yeah, yeah. But we look at generally, what is general, what is general do? Okay, normal goods and inferior goods. Right? This is the income chambers, okay? So and the, the third one was well, it was actually luxury goods, right? Third one, yeah. yeah. That's my okay. So normal goods, this is when income rises. So remember what we're doing here, we're trying to prove this. Five factors which cause shift of demand, the, the change in the price of related goods and services, substitutes and complements. The second one, changes of income. Changes of income influence your demand, right? There's a shift in demand. So normal goods, when income rises, demand for normal goods increases. You know, normal clothes, restaurant meals, internet, TV bundles. Uh, restaurant meals, okay, if your income goes up, you'll go to your restaurant more often, whichever restaurant you go to, right? Inferior goods, though, when income rises, the demand falls. For example, Poundland. If you if you suddenly your salary increases, you're going to Poundland is going to decrease, right? If you're smart, you just store shop. What we're talking about here, there's always exceptions. We're talking about what the general rule is. Yeah, that's yeah. it. There's always going to be people, some people. There was a million. There was a one of the richest people in the world used to always their life because they grew up poor. They became filthy rich, but would always eat cold porridge in the morning to save money. Yeah. So there are people like this. That, Even the millionaires. Yeah. Some people are like this. That, that I, I actually worked with somebody like this. He owned a lot of companies and he owned a college as well, which I worked at. But he would never hire a cleaner. He would do the cleaning himself. Ah, uh, I respect people like that. I, yeah. So that's, that was his mentality. His mentality was, I don't want to pay someone, I want to save the money. Yeah. True. Yeah, true. Okay, so inferior goods are like that. And then luxury goods, red men goods, uh, and speculative goods are other categories, unique luxury, uh, unique goods that follow other rules. Okay, so there are other rules for this, the future, okay? Luxury goods. You know, that's the, you can, uh, 
having a, I've never written for Shakespeare's person. Disgusting. It might be dangerous, I don't know. I mean, I've never written. I don't know. Actually, <laughs> that's only like, oh, uh, well. Yeah, for Shakespeare, you didn't. Huh? You didn't kind of. Yeah, I think the reason why I thought it was just I had, for the first time, I had a large amount. So it's very strong and powerful. It's true uh, because you, you need to combine huh? with the typical sauce, something you can need to have inside. Oh, like the sauce mm-hmm. Yeah, because oh, have, it, so have you had it before? Very fish. Yeah, very, exactly, very fish. Yeah, it's it's very it's like yeah, strong yeah, juice, I I, yeah, when I'm it's I, yeah, I agree with you, it's tough. Yeah. But uh, it's okay. <laughs> when I see rich people do it, they take it kind of, kind of wafer. Yeah. It's, it's not the way. Like, no, you don't. You don't yeah. have it excessively. No, you don't. Okay, so okay, we're going to talk about that later. What should we do tomorrow? Okay. Fine. Okay. Okay, so what we're saying then, if your income goes up, your consumption of normal goods goes up, but your consumption of inferior goods goes down. You get that idea? Okay, so if your if your if your salary goes up, the whole demand curve goes to the right. Okay, so shifting the whole demand curve from D one to D two, right? So your salary is gone up. All normal goods will be increasing constantly. Um, okay, let's look at the other ones. Changes in t- this is more challenging. Changes in taste fashion or trends. Economists have less to say about this, okay? But we can say that the textbook has a good example. Like 70 or 80 years ago, a man was not dressed unless he had a hat. That, that has now changed. Hats are not part of our dress code really, okay? Yeah. Fashion, okay? Do you know um, when Meghan Markle became f- uh, like famous by marrying Harry, she had a, something called a bullet bag. The, the pan bag was like this big. Yep, that was that was the famous bullet bag, and everybody wanted one because well, it's, it's just for dress. It's like, like well, it's, for, it's for fashion. It doesn't have to. You don't have to go carry it in it. You know, the idea was I've got this like funky kind of like clothes. Right. Yeah. One thousand pound dress. I've got this funky little little, little you know you know these people have got accessories. Yeah, accessories. Yeah. And then everybody wanted one. Young girls wanted one. Young girls. You should probably have one of those things. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, and trends, you know, like, like for example, I don't know if you know the footballer David Beckham, okay? Once he had a skunk head, skunk, like this. Yeah? Mm. So only young what men, I thought, next month they all have this one. Okay? Follow fashion. Yeah, follow fashion. You know, follow the song? It's the follow, follow. Follow the you know, follow the <laughs> We don't know what I'm talking about. Falani. Falakuti. 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 He's like the um, African Bob Marley, right? Yeah, he's amazing. Yeah, I like Hazard some of that. I've got the number one. I'm Mr. Follow Follow. follow. It's very good. Mr. Follow Follow. Okay. So, again, if, if, if uh, fashion or taste changes, let's say people will, the demand will shift because people are increasing their demand for what's in fashion. Yeah? So you say that again. If, if, if something's in fashion, people want it. So the demand goes up. True. And change in expectation. Okay. All right. Let's say, okay, you have an expectation, right? That the price of something will go up, your demand for it now will go up because it's going to go up later. Yeah? So that, that, that's, that's an idea. But, uh, if, if, you're, if you're projecting something, the price of something is going to go up, I'll buy it now. The one I'm going to buy it now is cheap. The demand will go up now because you think the price will go up in the future. Is that hindsight or foresight? Foresight. Foresight. What's the difference between the two? Foresight is what we see something in the future. You think in the future you think prices will go up, so I'll buy it now. Hindsight is, let's say that you, know, you marry a woman, you're a horrible girl. With hindsight, having looked it up, I'm never going to do that again. That's foresight. That's hindsight. Can you marry? Hindsight. You got the beats. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't want to give it to you, yeah. She gave it to you, yeah. And you know, with hindsight, I'll never do that again. Yeah. Looking back at that horrible experience, I will never do that again. Hindsight, yeah. You never had that experience with a lady yet. Yeah. Uh, uh, looking back. Sure. Uh, yeah. No. What? 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 Uh, ah, yeah. 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 The woman gives you some advice. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Tell me, does it look like someone who can be beaten by a girl? No, not beaten, 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 
sights when you boom through it. Four sights when you four sights when you're about to fall beforehand. Before and high is what is what high. Oh, yeah. so, so four sights like prediction, four yeah. faster. Yeah. And then hindsight is like you math. Gone boom through it and yeah. I you wouldn't reflect. Yeah. 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 Okay, and the change in numbers of consumers. If the number of consumers are more, for example, simply, there's a great population increase. Like, say, the population in this country 20 years ago was 60 million, now it's about 66 million, right? So if there's more people, there's more demand. There's more demand, for example, for normal food. People are going to eat more bread because it's a bigger population. More potatoes, more cornflakes. Like, like now it's increasing, it's after the restaurant. Some people, yeah, yeah, uh, but I don't think the competition is I don't think the top is of this kind of country can fall much. I don't think so because it's, it's like the fifth largest economy in the world and a very small population. The fifth? fifth largest economy, you want, yeah. So, the largest is America, US, then China, two, Japan, three, oh. Germany, four, and Britain, five. You can have so there yeah, are more than France, yeah, France, and France, six. How come? America have the largest economy and China be the second. Yeah, there's more people in China than there is in America. It's not the number of people, it's the, the value of the goods and services produced. I will teach you a lesson here in this course where how do you measure the wealth of a country? Mm -hmm. And I will teach that there's a way it's called the gross domestic product. So the value of a country is to do with the, 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 we judge the economy on the value of the goods and services that they produce. But even China, they produce a lot of goods, probably the, the most goods in the world, right? <laughs> it's, 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 not, it's, not, it's not the amount of goods, it's right. the value of the goods. So because like, like, let's say the iPhone was designed in California, yeah. it's assembled in, 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 in China, so they only get 3% of the, of the, of the, of the uh, uh, yeah. Most of the, more than half the goods are in Well, China only got 3%. Yeah. So it's not zero point zero zero three. So like in Africa, I can see this this presumption. Yeah. The same quality, I mean the same desire everything. Yeah. Well, hence this one from China. I'm mean, getting and this from another country. That's why it's not valid. I mean we're we getting some break. Yeah, you have some questions. Okay, where am I? Okay. Yes. So what we've done then, okay, is we've looked at these are the five reasons for a change for, for the demand to increase from there to there. So you, you've got to understand these five, okay? Uh, so we've done this, we've done this, we've done this. So there's a difference then, last thing I want to say today, okay, between a shift of the demand curve, which is D1 to D2 for those five reasons I just gave, okay? And a, and a shift along the demand curve, you know, which is to do with price. So if the price goes up, demand goes down, and if the, demand, if the price goes down, demand goes up. That's a, that's a movement along the demand curve. A movement of the demand curve, a shift of the demand curve, is because of these reasons, these five reasons. So if the demand goes down, then if the price goes down, it increases mm -hmm. the demand, right? Yeah. Well, a lot of com companies just increase their prices so they can get more sales. What so are they doing? Do -do. Okay. Okay, so what we'll do, we'll have a break, we'll have a 20 minute break, and we'll come back in 20 minutes, please. Thank you. What did you say? Um,